In France, they call it une coco, and in South Africa, it's known as a pocha. But here in the U.S., we call it a Dutch oven, and I wouldn't want to cook in a kitchen without one. So luckily, I've got Adam here. He's going to show us which one won our testing. These are true kitchen workhorses, Bridget. They are. All right. We have 11 Dutch ovens here that were all about six to eight quarts, and the price range was a low of $54.31 to a high of $367.99. That's quite a spread. Yes. Most of these pots were enameled cast iron. We love the heat retention qualities of cast iron for a Dutch oven. Two of them were outliers. That one down at the very end is just plain cast iron, no enamel coating. And this one right here is ceramic. The ceramic one is significantly lighter. And you know, if that was a viable alternative, we were definitely interested in that. Sure, sure. So let me tell you about the tests. Okay. The cooking tests included searing meatballs and then simmering them in tomato sauce, braising beef burgundy, frying French fries, and baking almost no need bread. And the pots were evaluated on the quality of the food and how easy these pots were to use and to clean. So let's talk about some design factors that affected ease of use. Okay. The first one is the cooking surface, and that relates to the shape of the pot, and that relates to the sides of the pot. Ah, okay. You want the largest cooking surface that you can get because that means fewer batches when you're, say, browning meatballs or meat for sure. stew, something like that. This one has sides that kind of curve in yeah. towards the bottom. Sure that takes away some of your cooking surface. So this one had a fairly small cooking surface at eight inches, whereas the sides sides of this one don't curve in. They're pretty straight. Mm -hmm. That left more cooking surface nine and three quarter inches. Okay. We also paid attention to the interior finish. This one is dark and that actually made it a little harder for testers to judge what's going on with the fond when they were searing meat or meatballs. Sure. It also made it hard to see the tip of a remote thermometer when they had it in there when they were frying french fries. Much easier to work with a lighter colored interior. Weight was another important factor. Like I mentioned, cast iron Dutch ovens are almost always heavy. Sure. And the range in this lineup was just over 18 pounds. That's this guy to nine and three quarter pounds. And why don't you do a little weightlifting for me, Bridget? All right. Try that one. So this is empty and this is really heavy. I mean, imagine this full of hot fat or a big cassoulet, something like exactly. that. Exactly. And how much does this weigh again? Nine and three quarter pounds. All right. Oh yeah, no, totally. I could totally. carry my kids around in that. Yeah, so it's a point in favor of the ceramic sure. one. Another important design feature was the handles. Because, you know, if you're lifting a stew or your cassoulet mm -hmm. out of the oven, it's hot, it's heavy, you want something to grip onto. And testers really preferred big, open-looped, beefy handles like this one. Give nice those a try. Nice and secure. Yep. Yeah. And compared to little tiny tab handles like that one, lift that one up. Yeah, I mean, you have to use your fingertips. Oh, that's heavy, too. You have to use your fingertips. <coughs> And I can't even imagine if it was hot and it had big pot holders or towels. Exactly. Towel, right? Oven mitts or right? pot holders do not make that any easier. These should be pots for the long haul. I actually have friends who are using their grandmother's hand-me-down Dutch ovens. Exactly. And so we wanted to get a sense of their durability, and that meant abuse testing. The testers performed three abuse tests, scrubbing the pots clean 10 times with an abrasive sponge, whacking the rim 50 times with a metal spoon, and slamming the lid onto the base 25 times. Wow. Now, all but two of these survived unscathed. Mm -hmm. They're pretty strong. This was, unfortunately, the downfall of our lightweight <laughs> ceramic. Here it is. <gasps> Check it out. Yeah, fissure there. It's only going to get bigger with more use. And that was just putting it down from a two-inch height. Wow. So that pretty much kills it. It's too fragile to be sure. a serious workhorse kitchen right. pot. One of the other pots got a little chip in the enamel, but it really didn't affect its functionality okay. at all. So in the end, we had our winner, which was no surprise. This is the Le Creuset yep. seven and a quarter quart round Dutch oven. We've loved it in the past. We still love it. It's $367.99. The price will make you gasp, but it's 13.7 pounds, so it's a nice manageable weight. It's got a light interior. It's really durable. It's just, it's a great pot. If you don't want to spend that much money, and a lot of people don't, there is a Best Buy. All right. This is the Cuisinart Chef's Classic Enameled Cast Iron Covered Casserole. This is the one that got 
a little tiny chip in it from the abuse testing, but again, it didn't affect the functionality. It's a little bit heavier than our winner, but it's got the big, wide cooking surface. It's got the easy to see light interior, and this one was only $83.70. That's a big difference. Yeah. Well, there you go. If you want a Dutch oven for the long run, look no further than the Le Creuset round Dutch oven. It's $367.99. There you go. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.